the Alcabier fronting warp drive part two, the technology behind the concept, and the secret of gravity. For a long time, mankind yearned to travel among the stars. And for a time, science fiction served to inspire and fulfill many. But then one day, a young man, filled with passion for space, sat down and created a mathematical marvel. That was Alcubierre, 1994. But his concept was, at the time, out there, criticized, not well accepted. That marvel, the remote promise of a faster-than-light drive. Unknown to him, he single-handedly set in motion a sequence of events. What he did, inspired, paved the way to a new technology, a drive that influences space-time while shielding its crew from time dilation, ushering in the fledglings of interstellar travel. Back in the 1980s, Fronning had already proposed another technological marvel, the quantum ramjet. But this too, at the time, was, well, ambitious, light years beyond mankind's capacity. Who is Fronning? Most are aware of the buzzard ramjet. There was a time when Fronning and buzzard were colleagues Together, they had proposed an advanced nuclear propulsion drive. Are you referring to anatronic fusion? Yes. It was designed to go from Earth to orbit and beyond. However, the drive that has the greatest potential is the Alcabier fronting warp drive. This is the drive that makes use of conditioned photons. Conditioned photons? What are they? They are electromagnetic packets with a complex oscillation pattern where their symmetry has been altered. Symmetry? You have two matching ears, arms. That's physical symmetry. But there's also other forms of symmetry, social and even one of space-time. Okay, symmetry. But how does that relate to photons being conditioned? All particles and photons have a symmetry that governs what they are and what they do. The symmetry of a photon makes it a photon, an electromagnetic packet that interacts weakly compared with the forces within the core of the atoms. However, if I changed its symmetry in a specific way, it now becomes a packet of the atomic forces as well. I can now make that packet do much greater work. I can even invoke negative pressures of space-time to propel a spacecraft. I know what positive pressure is. It's the air pressure in a bicycle tire. But what is negative pressure? How can it propel a spacecraft? Space-time is absolutely seething with pulsating energies. Momentary flashes so incredibly energetic, yet so brief they almost do not exist. This means that space-time is made of stuff, stuff that influences all things, photons included, and such things as positive and negative pressures, energies. You already know positive pressure. It squeezes you everywhere. Negative pressure is an aspect of space-time that pulls on everything in every possible direction. The speed of the photon is determined by the ease at which the photon can move through space-time. 
if I perturb a region of spacetime around a spacecraft with conditioned photons. I'm now also changing the ease at which the photon and spacecraft can travel through space-time. Now by the old principle of action and reaction, I can move the spacecraft up to and beyond the usual speed of light. How do conditioned photons generate negative energy? If we generate an intense enough beam of energy focused in one spot, this will tear apart the fabric of spacetime itself, creating shock waves, pressures, which we call gravity, anti-gravity, and gravitational waves. The faster the tear moves, the more energy spews forth enough speed and the tear practically holds itself open. Such is the energy available. But we can do better. Focus a beam of conditioned photons and we can create a tear in the fabric of the atomic forces as well. An incredibly energetic tear and a disproportionately powerful space-time ripple. But this ultimate void of material energy cannot remain open. It must close, drawing in its surroundings as it does so. We have negative energy. This is gravity. And this is how we can make a spacecraft fly faster than the beam of light. If all motion is relative, how can merely moving generate energy? Moving relative to what? What is the one thing that is closest to being stationary in our expanding universe? The microwave background. The microwave background. For a long time, mankind believed our galaxy to be the entirety of an unchanging universe. Then we discovered nebulae, so distant beyond our own galaxy, realizing these were other galaxies like our own, billions of stars, vast clouds, dust, gas, formed into gigantic structures. Peering farther into the cosmos, the more distant the galaxy, the redder they appeared. In time, we realized galaxies were accelerating away no longer was the universe static, unchanging, but dynamic and expanding. But we also discovered something unexpected. Coming from everywhere was a cosmic rain of microwave photons, originating from the very center of our universe. This background has the same perspective as space-time itself. But space-time is not static or unchanging. It twists, curves, it's dragged by numerous stars, planets, comets. These all affect the energy we can harness. If we are dragged along with the planet, our relative motion is the dominant influence on the energy we can harness. And this is the fundamentals of how the Alkibiarfranin warp drive works. For more technical information, visit our website at astronx.com. Why are you showing flying saucers and walnut-shaped spacecraft? The discoid and the spheroidal-shaped spacecrafts are practical. Think about it. A spheroidal craft requires the least surface area to enclose the greatest volume. The spacecraft we are proposing range in diameter from 100 meters to 3 kilometers. Omnidirectional movement is provided by the ring drive 
located at the perimeter of each craft and as you can see is incorporated within the whole of the discoid craft in the form of a flange. Of course, the discoid craft is the most aerodynamic whilst also reducing resisting effects from Cherenkov radiation, making it ideal for high-speed interplanetary hops. Widening the ring into a flange creates a thicker radiation field which reduces the energy consumption and increases the acceleration assisting effect. Well, that concludes this video, the Alcabier Franning Warp Drive Part 2. We want to thank you for watching. Be sure to watch for our other videos and subscribe, as this will help us post more videos more often. Additionally, we are currently in the process of creating a Patreon account. For more information, see the video description. Till then, keep wondering about space.